The Yuma Border Patrol Station includes the Barry M. Goldwater Bombing Range. For years, it has been a favorite of smugglers running drugs into the U.S. In the following, you will hear the crew of an American Border Patrol aircraft as it flew west from the spot labeled A. This is part of ABP's Operation Beef. I actually got a T-track right here going to the United States. These are vehicle tracks running into the Goldwater bombing range. One year later, the ABP crew flew past the same area. This time, a fence had been built. Notice how the fence interdicts the vehicle trails. And this is a fence. It is not a small vehicle barrier. It is at least 13 feet high. In this segment, the crew is flying further west in the open desert from point B on this map. Note that the aircraft is flying in Mexico, pointing its cameras north. This was done in accordance with FAA regulations there, and a filed not flight much, plan. Not much anything there. I don't see a fence there. I will take a, take a close shot with the uh, still, okay? Let, see if we can see a fence in there at all. I'm not seeing anything. Okay, we'll take a close shot. I have. Give me the number. 1052, 1053, and 54. Photo 1052 shows a wide open border with no fencing. In fact, the crew couldn't even find a no trespassing sign. I got another one. 200. I got, I got two tracks that are driving right across the border into the United States. Yeah, people just like drive off the road and they're in the United States and they're going north. Yeah, and I mean, it's see it. A lot of it. This sign warns migrants that cross the Barry Goldwater bombing range to watch out for poisonous critters. It says nothing about bombs. Are you taking pictures of yeah. them? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. well then give me a mark. No, just continuously mark. Okay, 201. They're, they're everywhere. I mean, I can... Okay, but you, you're getting the video too. Yeah. This is common as squirrels. This is incredible. This, this is the payoff, guys, right here. Mark. 202. 1063. I mean, they're just everywhere. Look, there, look at that. Everywhere you look, there's two tracks that drive right across the border. More than 17,000 illegal aliens were reported apprehended on the bombing range in 2005. Six months later, the Goldwater Range was protected with 40 miles of fence. As the crew flew along, it could see clearly how the fence had cut off hundreds and hundreds of vehicle trails. Miles southeast. In mid-2008, American Border Patrol's Operation Beef flew a mission over the sand dunes west of Yuma. Now here we are. We're flying up west of Yuma across the desert. And here there is absolutely nothing. We have no... We have no border patrol. We have no cameras that we can see. What's to keep drug yeah. dealers? Yeah, great. What's to keep drug dealers from using those things at night? Nothing. These dune buggies were riding right across the border. They couldn't see it because there was nothing to show where the border was. A drug smuggler's delight. 
Yeah, it's not much of a border. I'm going to zoom in and see if I can see if there's any fencing there at all. There's none. There's not. No. no barbed wire, no nothing. Nope. This monument marks the location of the border, probably used by smugglers for navigating in the dunes. Now, new fencing stops their northward trek. In 2008, the entire desert from Yuma to Calexico was closed off to smugglers. Along the Mexican border, fencing and vehicle barriers grew from 100 miles in 2005 to more than 500 miles by the end of 2008. Smugglers are becoming desperate. They're even using ultralight aircraft to move small amounts of marijuana across the border. One pilot was killed near Yuma. High-tech submarines are being intercepted at sea. Mexican cartels are growing cannabis plants on national forests. More drug tunnels are being discovered. Do these acts of desperation have anything to do with the fact that America is building fencing and barriers along the border? As more fencing and barriers went in, more marijuana was planted north of the border and more plants eradicated. As more fencing went in, the price of cocaine rose. And, most incredibly, as more smuggling routes were cut off, drug-related deaths in Mexico followed. There is no doubt that new fencing has interdicted known smuggling routes. South of Sierra Vista alone, the fence now stretches for 43 miles. With more than 200 miles of new fencing and more than 240 miles of vehicle barriers interdicting smuggling routes, is it a surprise that cartels might be warring over the remaining routes? If this is so, then there is a light at the end of the tunnel. If construction of only 200 miles of real fencing had a significant impact on drug cartels, think of what 700 miles of double-layered fencing would have done. The evidence presented here argues that the Congress of the United States should reinstate the Secure Fence Act of 2006, fully funded and expanded to at least 1,000 miles of the border. To do so would protect the people of the United States as well as the people of Mexico.